ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is time for Space, Space News. News. Well, we love bringing you the stories about the final frontier, and who better to do that with than our friend, and I'm, I'm going to call him now our house astronomer, Dean Regas. I like it. Well, I like, like a it house a DJ, a house astronomer. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Dean's the guy. I call you Dino sometimes, just as like funsies. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, that's all right. If it's problematic, <laughs> please let me know and I won't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Dino, spaceman, whatever. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. It's cool. um, speaking of spaceman and, and people in space generally, that's where we wanted to mm -hmm. start. You got a couple of people up on the International Space Station who were not expected to be there. No. And they're still there. They're I still mean, stuck. imagine this. You're an astronaut number one. You're going into space. Yeah. You're going up for an eight day mission. You get up there, something goes wrong, and now you're stuck there for eight months. Whoa. This is going to be um, a movie, don't you think, eventually? It, it, well, I mean, it's not the most exciting movie. I mean, they're sitting up there in space. So I get, uh, uh, <laughs> well, right, depending on still, what happens. Well, it's it true. Be. It's not, we don't know the ending yet. But that's the, the idea is that this, uh, this crew craft that took them up there had some problems and now they thought it's too dangerous to go back on the craft so they have to wait for the next uh, basically the next shuttle to come up there to get them the, and it's not until next year. The so. sort of obvious questions that come up do they have enough food? Are right. they able to send them more food in the meantime? Uh, what about the uh, facility, so to speak? You got a couple more people up there doing the business than you expected to be doing the business. Well, you're right. I mean, we've got nine people there in the space station now. Usually it's seven, so they got these two extra guests. And yeah. so if you're a house guest, you better be on your best behavior, number one. Uh, you better clean that toilet a little bit more often. Than Thank that you very way. much. But uh, they have plenty of food, plenty of air. Four of them are going to head back down that have been there for almost six months, so there's going to be some space, and okay. only two are going to come up to uh, replace the four going down, so then they'll be at the gotcha. normal crew. But still, imagine that you you sign up for an eight-day cruise, yeah. and you end up there eight months. So It's yeah. the Gilligan's Island of space. It absolutely is. I, I was going to ask you one other thing, and I always ask you other things, but the, another, another thing that sort of occurred to me, do you feel like they underplayed how big a deal the problems on that that Boeing craft? Because at first, even when they there was the helium stuff at first, and then there were some thruster problems I remember that happened, but they kept saying things like, well, they could come down and it would be fine. We're just doing this out of an, you know, an, an overabundance of caution. Well, now they're there for eight months. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that there were some problems. I think it was probably a little dicey for a while. Yeah. Um, I think they are being overly cautious, probably, which is always good Understood. to do. Understood, sure. Um, I think the, what it highlights to me, though, is that, wait a second, I thought there'd be another craft sitting there waiting in the wings. But no, they, this is how short this is. This is how uh, you know precise these missions are, it's is wild. that they don't have a backup thing ready to go right away. It's crazy. Okay. Well, moving on, the James Webb is always making new discoveries. We love to show the images uh, out of there. But talk to us about rogue worlds. Yeah, so uh, in our solar system, we have our eight planets go around the sun. Don't that. talk to me about Pluto. But uh, we got our eight <laughs> planets go around the sun. Now, uh, most planets in, in space go around stars. But there are the occasional rogue planets, these planets that don't have a host star that go around. And so uh, the James Webb Space Telescope found six of them very recently. Uh, that are just roaming around, no star, and they just kind of go where they want, you know, just like you guys. They're just rogue. <laughs> that's true. They go where they want, they do what they want to do, and that's what they are. <laughs> so, you know. Is it is it odd, and I guess it maybe speaks to the vastness of space, to not be in something's gravitational orbit? I mean, there's a lot of big stuff out there that can grab you, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, it's very rare to find these kind of things. So it, the vast, vast, vast majority of the exoplanets, planets around, found around other stars, go around other stars. Right. So it's somewhere, I think they're in the four or 5,000 other planets have been found in other solar systems. Uh, so these are very weird worlds. They're kind of like almost stars, but not quite stars. I love them. And so, yeah, I mean, it, you, you gotta you gotta root for rogue planets. I yes, cool. I root for the misfits. I root for the ones that do their own thing. As it, my son would say, they're the. What, what did they say? What in his gen? They're the sigmas. Oh, they're not the alphas. They're not thing. the betas. They're the sigmas oh, yeah. of the gen alpha. It generation. totally sounds they're like the name of thing. a science fiction novel, by the way. It does. Rogue worlds. <laughs> I like it. I think it's that's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so new mission uh, to Mars from Blue Origins called the Escapade. Not the Janet Jackson song. Maybe they'll no. play it on the way out. But that would be a good idea. Tell yeah, us about that. Escapade or Escapades, depending on how you uh, do it. Uh, there's two missions. So it's uh, they're sending this rocket to Mars with these two kind of small sized uh, satellites that are going to go around the red planet and measure some things. This was this was the idea of like let's do a cheaper, smaller mission. 
Uh, and the idea was it was going to hitch a ride with another rocket, but that rocket got delayed. So this one is going to be a standalone mission. So two satellites monitoring the atmosphere and the magnetic uh, field around Mars. Uh, at the same time, and it's a combo between NASA and Blue Origins, and uh, pretty exciting. So it's launching in October. This is going to be a busy uh, couple months because we've got the uh, another mission going up to the space station. We've got this. We've also got one going out to Europa, a moon of Jupiter called the Europa Clipper, which I've been waiting for forever. And so uh, this is going to be an exciting fall for Great. space missions. Well, okay. you're going to be coming to visit us quite a bit then. We I hope so. I yeah. hope so. Yeah, definitely don't sleep on the Europa Clipper mission. That is the real, really cool one coming up to nice. see this water world around <gasps> Jupiter. Love that. I know. It's under the radar. Maybe because they're nervous about it, but I'm nervous about it too. But I think it's going to go off. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Hey, we, we can't let you go just real quick. I know we're running out of time, Tanner. Um, about something that sort of felt very local uh, in terms of space action. Uh, the, the the fireball that shot through the sky, what about, about a, a, a week ago? Oh, yeah, last week. Uh, so many people saw this. It was right at prime time, right about 944, where this fireball went across the sky. This meteor that broke up into pieces. And I think the, the biggest thing was you, you can tell who went to the Green Day concert that night. <laughs> Because <laughs> everybody at the Green Day concert, it was like, I don't know what they were playing at that time, but yeah. they saw this and they're like, woo. How cool is that? What, what caught, watch here. Yeah, Boom. yeah. What yeah. causes the pop right as it hits the horizon? Yeah, so this is an object going through space, tens pop. of thousands of miles an hour, yeah. hits our atmosphere, slows down, and that slowing down transmits into heat. And it kind of exploded above the ground, uh, broke into, you see those two and pieces, sometimes you see those green colors. I love it. It's awesome. So uh, this is why you guys got to keep looking up. Right. But I mean, that's what we do. Never yeah. know what you might exactly. see. Can I just point out too, though, and I may be incorrect, but I think Tanner told us he talked to you. And while that looks like it was something that was like exploding close to the Earth's surface, it, it was still... Absolutely. Yeah. When you see a meteor and you see a shooting star, it's still 40 or 50 miles above you. Okay. So I know it always looks like it's going to come down in the neighbor's yard, but it's most likely coming down the neighbor's state. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty far Good away. to know. So don't, so don't be too alarmed right. next time you see one. Dean, we love your visits every single yes, time. thank you so and much. It, and it sounds like in the fall we may see a few times. I think so. I Keep right. looking up, guys. All That's right. right. Thank you, Dean. I'm excited about this. You kicked the goal from midfield. Yep. I'm Jen Dalton. I'm Bob Herzog. Okay. Well, I feel totally comfortable like yeah, this. Yeah, well, this feels real good. Our no-show socks. Ah. Fat or bad? Bob's You're welcome, Earth.